I'm gonna line the back of the sofa with a plastic bag. I'm gonna pop this bunny ears cactus just there. Is this a joke? What am I doing? What am I actually doing? I'm, I'm getting angry with my old self here because I am making some ridiculous choices. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today and I hope you are coping okay in the heat because it's ridiculous. Today I thought though we could do something a little bit different and I thought I'd go back and revisit a video that I made almost four years ago now where I completely stripped back my living room at the time and restyled the whole thing with plants and firstly I thought this would be a very interesting thing to do to just kind of look at what I would do differently because I know my style choices have changed quite a lot over the last four years. I've learnt, oh god I've learnt so much about plants in the time between then and now as well so I feel like I would do things pretty differently and I thought it'd be quite fun to see what I would do. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, I haven't actually re-watched this video since I made it, so it's gonna be interesting to look at some of the choices I made. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I've brought my laptop over so we can watch it together and talk through it as we go. I've said it before as well, but I do find watching my old videos a little bit cringy. I don't know why, I just find it weird. And this is one of my first ones. I think this was maybe like the third video I ever made on my channel. So it's going to be interesting, but let's do it, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this week's video, which as you can probably tell is going to be slightly different. In this video I'm going to be taking you with me as I jungleify, junglefy my living room. My living room is pretty planty already, but for this video I've completely stripped it back and I'm going to be starting from scratch. I'm just looking at how clean the sofa is there. My god, that sofa had, had minimal dog on it at this point. And I won't show you it now, but it does not look that colour. I personally love really kind of simple, minimal decor with warm colours like splashes of wood and tans and lots of greenery, like lots. So, to be honest, I think colour-wise that is still kind of my vibe. I guess if you wanted to put a label on it, I would say kind of um, like vintage bohemian kind of Scandinavian style. I've been told that is what my flat looks like, but... I am starting to get braver with colour and that's definitely happened since Ross has moved in because he's a very colourful boy. Uh, I have actually just converted one of my um, little tabletop cabinets into a colourful plant cabinet that's got lots of pinks and purples in there. I will put a clip of that in so that you can see it. Um, it's in the very early stages, it doesn't look amazing at the moment, but I would say colour-wise, on paper, that is still the kind of thing I like, but I think I would just do it a bit differently now. In this video, I'm gonna hopefully be showing you how you can start to incorporate that jungle vibe in your own home whilst still making sure that your plants are happy and healthy. Using plants to decorate your home is really, really great, especially if you're renting, which I am, and you can't put a lot up on the walls. So as you can see, I'm starting with pretty much a blank canvas. This room is pretty asymmetrical, so I'm just going to focus on adding plants to create kind of a nice balance and dynamic. Whatever room you're working with, I always just find that plants help to make the area feel more kind of grounded and creative. That is something I still 100% agree with. I do, I, I often find it a little bit weird when I walk into a space that doesn't have any plants in it. It feels very clinical in a way to me and like don't get me wrong that is not to say that you can't have a beautiful home without plants lots of my friends have lovely homes and they don't have plants but it, it just doesn't feel quite right in some way I don't know if anyone can relate to that but it, yeah I don't like it there are so many so many ways that you can use plants to add different impacts to your home sometimes even just by adding one or two kind of big statement plants in a room is enough but yeah I don't do things in half measures so I'm going all out Bonus points to anyone who can tell me how many times I say the word pop in this video. I feel like it could almost be turned into a drinking game. I know I still say that word a lot. <laughs> I'm going to start with the window area. I've got this devil's ivy plant, which actually started from just one cutting years ago. Then I'm going to just hang it right in the middle. Oh, try to bring the curtain rail down. By adding houseplants to your window area, it just kind of helps to 
bridge the gap between the outdoors and the indoors. Obviously today outside it's a bit dark and miserable but on the whole this window does actually let in a lot of natural light. It's west facing so it doesn't get a lot of harsh direct sun but just really really bright light which is perfect for this plant so i do actually still have that exact pothos plant i've got it hanging or i've got a section of it should i say i've chopped and propagated it many times since then because over the four years since i filmed this video it's grown a lot and yeah i think absolutely hanging it there in the spot that i hung it in the window looks really beautiful but I would just say, considering I'm not dealing with the brightest room in the world, I could have put like a hanging succulent there or something that requires a, a higher level of light than a pothos plant because pothos plants typically can survive and can grow quite well in lower lighting conditions as well. So for example, if I'd put it on that shelf on the left and let it trail down, I think it probably would have been fine there as well. That is definitely something I think right off the bat, I would already change. I'm just now going to go ahead and fill the rest of this windowsill with plants that enjoy the same kind of lighting conditions. So we've got Lucky Bamboo, Monstera Deliciosa, and then a rubber plant and a snake plant, which can also cope really well in lower light conditions, but this is absolutely fine for them too. So interestingly, I've said I'm going to go ahead and fill this windowsill with plants that enjoy similar lighting conditions, and yes, all of those plants will be happy there but all of those plants that I've added there are ones that don't need to be there like all of them could do pretty well if I was to move them back a little bit from the window and considering even at this point I know I don't have I didn't have as many plants as I've got now I think I'm at just over 300 now which I know is a little bit ridiculous I think I had at least a hundred at this point I can think off the top of my head of other plants that would have done better there that I chose not to put there. Like for example, that snake plant and lucky bamboo. I've got snake plants and a lucky bamboo in my collection now and one is in a very dark corner and the other is on top of my cooker because they don't need any natural light. Let me rephrase that actually, of course they do need natural light, but they are more than able to cope and grow in lower levels. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I don't know why I'm prioritizing those plants in that spot. By adding two on each side, it kind of gives that feeling of symmetry and highlights the hanging one in the middle and just kind of balances that window space really well. Also, if you have got a view outside your window that you don't really like loads of buildings or something that you don't want to look at, then you can absolutely use plants to disguise this too and kind of trick people into thinking that it's more natural and green outside. That's something that I, I mean, it's a practical thing, but I have definitely done with my place now. If you watch my videos, then you'll probably know the view from my balcony is not amazing. I've got kind of like a big industrial estate that goes around my flat. And so although I get lovely lights from the window that's just next to me, it doesn't have the nicest view. So all of my shelves that are currently in the windows have all of my plants on there. And it does kind of trick you into thinking that you're looking at nature outside when you look at it from the sofa, for example. That's something that I really didn't need to worry about here because this house had the most beautiful views. I really, I loved this house so much, but yeah, it's definitely something that you can do. I'm also gonna just pop this little humidifier in the middle so I can run it when the radiators are on. But also I just really like the kind of natural woody effect. By having plants on different levels or plants in hanging baskets, it just adds so much dimension and it's way more interesting to look at than if everything was just on one level. Again, you can't really tell today, but this room does have a big glass door on the other side of it and is probably kind of a medium, medium to highlight room. So I definitely wouldn't say that this is a highlight room. Uh, I think I got that very wrong. Yes, it had a, a glass door on one side and a window on the other side, but still it wasn't getting that much light. Like I don't think I was ever in that living room and thought, oh, it's really, really bright in here. I think probably I had a misconception about what bright light actually was, especially considering that a lot of the plants I own, even at this point, are tropical plants. They are going to require like really, really bright levels of light, even to the point that like the room I'm in now doesn't offer. So yeah, I also like, I, I had got a grow light set up upstairs in a designated plant room at this point. And if I can find a clip of that, I will put it on the screen because, oh my God, that plant room, I was just absolutely in love with it. Uh, but I don't add any grow lights into this space at all, I don't think. And I'm just almost wondering why, because 
there are so many dark corners in this space that I feel like would benefit from a grow light. The other thing that I touched on there is about having plants on different levels and again like part of it is just practicality now because I have got so many plants and I need to have them on different levels but I always feel like that is something that really helps to create like like I said just like a nice jungly vibe. I also think it can make a room feel taller like all of my, God, you're gonna see the mess, I'm so sorry. Um, well, let's tilt the camera up. Um, but all of my hanging plants that I've got up there, I feel like they help to kind of accentuate the fact that this place has got quite high ceilings. And if you were to take them away, I feel like it could potentially feel a little bit cramped in here. I have also said it in plant styling -y videos that I've made since this. I've like, there's lots of DIY ways that you can raise plants up. Like one of my favorite ways is getting like a big plant pot, turning it upside down and then putting a nice basket or something over it and using that as a plant stand. Just kind of playing about with levels because I think like even with like, I was gonna say with anything, not just plants, but specifically with plants, I just think it helps to make things a little bit interesting. That corner definitely needs something. I'm gonna line the back of the sofa with a plastic bag and then I'm gonna just pop this Calathea Trio star in the corner just to see what it looks like. Yeah, it just kind of adds a nice backdrop to that corner. I'm just gonna pop a couple more there too. I mean, yes, it, it looked like I still quite like the look of that, but why didn't I put it in a cash pot or something? Like in a plastic bag bag. No wonder the sofa's not the colour it used to be. Obviously I will be moving them when it comes to watering because otherwise the sofa will get ruined. In terms of the shelf, usually I would say have a mix of kind of normal upright plants and some lovely hanging plants coming down as well. But I'm just thinking, seeing as I've just added those ones there, I don't want that area to start feeling cluttered. So I think I might save my hanging plants for somewhere else. I'm just adding some little succulents to the shelf and some of my avocado propagations as well. See, again, without, oh my goodness, Claire, without having a grow light there, I mean, I've got, I've just put an aloe vera there and granted aloe vera can survive in slightly lower lighting conditions, but I don't think that is nearly enough light for that plant. And to be honest, the avocados as well, I would put them on the windowsill and I would move, I, I would have a complete rearrange. I would do like genuinely, I would do things so differently. I would take the pothos plant, the snake plant, <laughs> everything that's on the windowsill and put it on that shelf. And yeah, everything that's on the shelf, put it on the windowsill. What was I thinking? Like, literally, what was I thinking? Oh my god, this one is so heavy! Oh, my Alocasia Portadora. This is back when she wasn't just two leaves and she was looking really glossy and healthy and still not at her biggest at this point. But she looks lovely. Oh, hello! And Yodi, of course. So my elephant ear is a fairly high light plant, so it needs to be, probably needs to be closer to this side of the room. I'm going to try it over here, so it just kind of creates <laughs> a nice little canopy when you're sitting down. Do you like that? Oh, oh no, not kisses on the face. Oh, Yoli looks so puppyish. She's not a puppy here, she's, she's two. But there's some, I don't know, there's something about her that feels really like, you know how, how young dogs how, have that like elasticated looseness to their limbs? Oh, bless her. I mean, she's still got that sometimes. Look at her now. But going back to the plants, with my Alocasia Portadora, personally, I don't think that plant should be in this room at all. Don't get me wrong, I think it looks lovely in there, but I think if, if you want a big plant that's gonna add a jungly vibe in a space like that, I would go with something like a cast iron plant. I was gonna say a bird of paradise, and although bird of paradise wouldn't be in its optimum position there, I think it would do much better than the Alocasia Portadora because that is such a dramatic plant and it's a plant really that needs almost like direct sunlight. It needs really, really bright light. So yeah, I actually have a feeling I moved it from this spot like within a month of filming this because it wasn't happy and that kind of makes sense. I'm gonna pop my Anthurium down here too with it. So this one has been in low light conditions, high light conditions and it's literally done really well everywhere. So yeah, I'm gonna try it there because I like that little green patch. Sorry, I'm aware I'm stopping this a lot, but I'm having so many thoughts. Um, so that Anthurium, like, 
Jungle King or Jungle Bush or I can't remember the actual Latin name for it. Um, but that one that I've just put down by the sofa, that is an Anthurium that will literally be happy anywhere. It is such a hardy one. And I love that Anthurium so much, but because it was so big, I actually brought it here to this flat and I was like, it's not gonna fit. I can't find anywhere that this plant's gonna be happy. And because at the time it was one that I wasn't loving as much as some of my others, I gave it to my mum. And my mum's not always the greatest with house plants, but that one is still alive. And sorry, mum, if you're watching, you're probably not, but um, that says something. It's, it's a very hardy one. It can go very long periods of time without water. It can be thrown in pretty much any lighting condition and be incredibly adaptable. So I do think that that is good placement for that plant. This is not a plant, but I just think that plants and macrame go really well together. So I'm gonna put it up. I'm cheating here. I am um, actually made this out of wool during lockdown, which means that it's really, really, really lightweight. I'm just gonna use blue tack, but obviously if you are allowed to put stuff up on the walls or if it's heavier, then I would say use something a bit more sturdy but another solution for renters also i've just noticed i've put my ficus tinnicky my variegated rubber plant behind the sofa at the back just up, like by the little corner and the non-variegated rubber plant on the windowsill that makes no sense at all like swap them over and i mean although i don't think the rubber plants should be there in the first place but swap them over and it would make more sense because obviously the variegated rubber plant is going to require higher lighting levels because it doesn't contain as much chlorophyll so why i made that choice these are just very uneducated choices that i'm making I did have my fiddly fig here. And also, before I play again, uh, my variegated monstera there, I know she's tall, uh, and I know I'm spinning you around all the time, but that is, just by the laundry, that is that plant there, and I have chopped that plant back so many times. If you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll have seen the big chop I made of that plant when I was living back at my mum's house. I've chopped it since then, and if I hadn't chopped it, I can guarantee it would probably be the height of this room now. It's absolutely crazy. So it's weird looking at it there when it's so much smaller. But I think I'm gonna swap it out for my variegated monstera, mainly because, as you can see, it is desperately in need of a new moss pole, and I haven't got around to doing that yet. So at least for now, the wall will offer it some support. I recently repotted this one and I haven't got a nice pretty pot for it yet, so I think I'm just going to disguise that with some other plants grouped around the bottom. So I'm just going to pop this jade plant here, and then this is a hanging trailing plant, Sahoya. Okay, we need to stop again. So, the variegated monstera in that spot, usually I would say variegated plant in that dark corner, no, not at all. However, there, it's barely variegated. There is very little variegation on that variegated monstera. So I would have thought it would probably do okay there. If I do remember correctly, it grew fine there. And when I say fine, I don't remember if that actually even gave me any growth at that point. But I mean, if I had a grow light above it there or something, it's actually kind of similar to this corner here, which is a very dark corner. And I have currently got my monstera deliciosa in. Ideally, a grow light would be pointing down on that area. Um, but that's fine. That's not the worst choice I've made. And the Hoya, just down there to disguise it as well, that's my Hoya crinkleate. That one, absolutely fine in that spot. Honestly, that is a Hoya that can grow pretty well in almost any lighting conditions. However, the jade plant, the jade plant down there, why did I think that was a good idea? I'm not stupid at this point, I hope. I get that it looks very nice there, but again, without a grow light, that that one is just going to get incredibly straggly. I mean, again, what like put it on the windowsill, Claire? Why would I not put that on the windowsill and put like the snake plant there instead? I am majorly questioning some of these choices. By putting plants around your TV area, it kind of helps to take away that man-made feel. And it also just gives you something nice and natural to look at when you're not glued to the telly. I do still agree with that very much so. Also, if you're living in a flat or somewhere that's got quite low ceilings, if you find thin, tall plants like vine plants that don't reach the top of the ceilings, they come to just below the ceiling, this can actually help to make the room feel a lot taller, brighter and airier. If you want your plants to appear taller than they actually are, then 
a plant stand is a really great shout. Or like I've done with the plants behind the sofa, putting them on something to just raise them up. The great thing as well about having those ones behind the sofa is I don't really need to worry about pretty pots because you can't see the pots. I don't know why there's just something that's weirding me out about those plants behind the sofa. I like, I like, just looking at it as it is at the moment, I like having a corner of greenery. I think that looks nice. But I just feel like, I don't know, even running a little, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Those little shelves you can get, or even like the shower shelves, something to contain them a little bit so they're not actually coming into contact with the sofa. And maybe something that you could like command strip to the wall or something, because I just feel like one of the sofa cushions falls down, the plants are going flying. And as I said as well, it's it's just not good to have like wet plant pots that have just been watered on the back of a sofa, a material sofa. Um, I do, I do quite like the look of it though, I do. This is probably the point where a lot of people would stop. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna try this calathea down here by the fireplace just because obviously the fireplace is really dark and it just kind of breaks up the dark and the white, adds a nice bit of contrast and flow. This is actually an open fireplace, so obviously I'll have to move that plant when the fire's on. But another really lovely thing that I've seen people do if they've got a fireplace that's not in use is actually putting a low light plant into the fireplace. It just looks so beautiful and draws your eye to something nice as opposed to just nothing. I find that by having similar colours of pot or style kind of dotted around just helps everything to feel more connected in the space. I would agree. Um, I would absolutely agree. And obviously like a lot of the pots that I've got even now in my place, I've like, I've revamped a lot of them with macrame cord and I've just tried to make them fairly neutral so that the green kind of pops a little bit more. But the one thing I am starting to come around to is little pops of, uh, I'm saying pop a lot again, I know, uh, little pops of like, um, colour or, so, or like pattern or something that's a little bit different to mix it up and almost like draw your eye to that area to appreciate the plant. Like I don't think the pot should ever overshadow the plant. Is overshadow the right word? I think so. So yeah, you don't want to be looking at the pot as opposed to the plant, but they should complement each other. Like I feel like a lot of these ones I'm using here are just very, they're almost not there. They almost just kind of blend in. And I think I've got a little bit braver with some of my plants since then at adding, I don't know, a bit more dynamic to my plant collection. I'm gonna use this string of hearts to just trail down here. That just looks so nice. I love hanging plants coming off shelves. Again, 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 again. I've got to stop it, oh my God. So being completely honest, I think I was very new on YouTube at this point and I think I was more interested in creating a video where everything looked amazing at the end as opposed to actually thinking about the needs of the plants because I, have just put a string of hearts, which is a semi-succulent, and by the looks of it, a little dish of cacti on the fireplace where there is no source of natural light anywhere near. And if I wanted to put a hanging plant in the window, why didn't I put my string of hearts in the window and then put the pothos plant on, on the, um, what do you call it, fireplace? That would have made so much more sense. And again, having the cacti, the little cacti dish on the windowsill, yeah. I, I really do think that I'm a little bit style over substance here, I'm afraid. And I like to think that I've learnt, as I say, learnt a lot since then. I wouldn't do this now. But there's some interesting choices I'm making here and I'm not altogether a fan of them. I want to try something. So my other half made this out of pallet wood. And I'm just wondering if it would work as like a little plant stand. I guess because it's hollowed out as well. You could technically put like a humidifier or something in there if you didn't want it to be on display. Um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna pop this bunny ears cactus just there. Is this a joke? What am I doing? What am I actually doing? <sighs> okay, I feel like I'm, I'm getting angry with my old self here because I am making some ridiculous choices. 
So the bunny ears cactus is one of the one of the plants that I have now vowed to never have in my collection again because personally for me it's just it's just not worth the risk. It is one that is filled with these like very fine spikes called glycoids and you literally just have to brush past them and you will get hundreds of them in your finger and believe me you won't be getting them out for like weeks and weeks and weeks. It is an evil plant. It looks soft but it's not. And although lighting wise, perhaps not the worst choice I've made in that spot there, bearing in mind that it's so close to the ground and firstly, Yoli's about, but also we had neighbors at this point that would come over with children and stuff. That is such a silly place to put that plant. Such a silly place to put it. Hello, baby. <laughs> mind the clay here, mind the clay here. Oh, watch the cats. Okay, spiky plants do not belong at low there levels. We go. I'm gonna swap this one but I'm gonna put it in a really low light spot. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm still not sure how I feel about this. This might go, I'm gonna leave it there for now. I think I think I like it. It looks Again, horrible. Again, plants, I know, but just a bit of, bit of warmth. I also made those cushions. I wanna keep the coffee table fairly simple and clear, so I'm just gonna pop another little jade plant in the middle. You know what I'm gonna say. I still don't know about that brown palette thing. Hmm. I think I'm gonna take it out. I think I think I preferred it without it. Meh, maybe I'll put it back in. I don't know. I also just think this corner could do with just a little bit, a little bit of green. Just balancing it with the monstera on the other side. I don't even know what that plant is that I've just put in there. It almost looks like a string of pearls, but it also looks like a Hoya. And I haven't said what it is. So if it's a Hoya, fine, it can, what kind of Hoya would that be? Okay, if it's a Hoya, that spot is fine. If it's a string of pearls, that's the worst decision. That, that's potentially the worst decision of this whole video. I think I'm done. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think we're done? You watch that tail. It just feels calm. Okay, so, 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 so. I cannot deny that I prefer the look of the finished version because yes, I do love a space with plants in it. Also, before I get deep into discussion, my camera's about to die, so bear with me. Okay, hello again. Uh, yeah, as I say, I think the after looks better than the before, but as we all know, you've got like the main priority has got to be where the plants are gonna be happiest because otherwise the plants are not gonna last very long. You're gonna be constantly replacing these plants. And I think, I think I'm right in saying I, so I moved out of this house during lockdown and I think it was only like a month or a month or two after I filmed this that I did actually move out. So none of these plants would have had a chance to be in those spaces for really long enough for me to be able to see the detriment of them because I know they wouldn't have, half of these plants would not do well in the spots that I've put them in. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a massive learn as you go. I I also think like style wise, I would have done things a little bit differently. I know that the curtain poles at the end, like at either side of the window, I probably would have had some hanging plants coming down there. I also would have put more of my hanging plants coming off the shelf, like going over the back of the sofa. I, I absolutely love the look of that when you've got hanging plants coming down kind of over the back of Oh, off sofas. Uh, so yeah, I, I, oh God, I wish I could get back into that room again and do like, do a complete do over and style it differently now, knowing, knowing what I know. But that was interesting to watch. It was interesting to watch. It was also a little bit cringy to watch because I, oh, I don't know. I think I was just trying to sound very professional and kind of talking about style and flow and all of this stuff. and. I don't think, I don't think it was a 
bad job per se, considering that I was very much in the fairly early stages of like decorating with plants. Prior to this, I remember like, in fact, prior to lockdown, most of my plants had been in one room and that was the room on the other side that got very good light and then lockdown hit and I was like, I want to make the whole house a jungle. And yeah, I just didn't know as much about it. So yeah, but if you'd like to see more reaction videos like this, I genuinely, I genuinely feel like I learn quite a lot from doing them and kind of rethinking things and it kind of inspires me to rethink things in my current space. That is actually something I'm tempted to do at the moment. I know I said it in a video the other day. Whether or not I'll do it, I'm not sure. But yeah, let me know. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this. And I really hope you enjoyed this video because I enjoyed making it. Uh, and if you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers. <laughs>